Hey y'all, today we're gonna be making a corned beef with cabbage and potatoes all in the same crock pot and it's gonna shamrock your world because we're gonna make it super easy all while having a whole lot of fun. Corned beef with, what are you doing? Your hands weren't showing so I was trying to get your hands up there. A corned beef with cabbage and potatoes. It's gonna shamrock your world. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. And today we're going to be making an Irish favorite. We're going to be making corned beef along with some cabbage and some potatoes cooked in the same crock pot. The first thing y'all are going to need is a corned beef. We have a three pound, just a little over three pound corned beef. Find this in your local store. It's brined and it comes with a little flavor packet and we'll get to that here in a minute. You're also going to need I'm going to say about a half of this head of cabbage. It's going to depend on how big the slow cooker is that you're using. We'll grab a head of cabbage and we're also going to grab a pound and a half of baby red potatoes. Now, the recipe on the site shows that you want to have about six potatoes that are peeled and cut up. You know us, we love our potatoes little and we love our skin. So we're just going to make it super simple and take it straight out of the package, rinse them off and have them just like this. Now, the first thing I want to do, get rid of my lid. And I'm just going to take my beef and I'm going to set it down in here because it's going to get real messy if I don't. As you can see, you've got the juices and the blood from the meat. Now tell us, how is corned beef different than just regular brisket? It is brined. It's seasoned in a brine, I believe. I don't know. Did you Google it? Is this a pop quiz? No, I'm mm -hmm. just asking. Well, and one of the other pieces is it comes packaged with the seasoning packet that we want to use. And you are flinging yes, your I juice. Am I am going to have a mess to clean up. I'll tell you that right now. It's like watching Psycho and a cooking show at the same time. <laughs> wee! 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 <laughs> I think we might Let's need, put this up. We might need No, to, we need this for later. Uh, uh, we don't need that there. Uh, we'll oh. clean this up! Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, so we're back from our little kitchen mess. <laughs> Got everything all cleaned up. Now I'm going to take my brisket, my corned beef, and just put it down in my slow cooker. Did the seasoning packet fall? Yes. Okay. This is where you has to go fishing. <laughs> and you got to look for that seasoning packet. Here it is, right here. Oh, what a mess. It's kind of messy the way they deliver this. I kind of <laughs> wish they put the packet on the outside, so let me go wash my hands and rinse off my packet. <laughs> but really, it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> It's messy, but it's easy. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth oh, it. it's worth it. Trust me. Take your packet. And you also want to make sure that your meat is fat side up, which this is, I think. The fat on me? Nope. Oh, ooh, ooh. Well, there's kind of fat on both sides of this, so. Just do your best. There we go. Lay it down like that right there. And why are you putting it fat side up, Mikey? Because as it heats up, I'll set this right here so I can clean it off again. You want the fat, as it starts to melt, you want it to melt down into that meat, more flavor. Instead of just kind of sitting at the bottom. Yeah. It's not going to do any good sitting at the bottom. You want it to soak down into that meat for a lot more flavor, make it super juicy. And then you take your flavor packet and put it right over the top every corned beef and all those flavors will get soaked into the fat that's it for that and now because I want to save that half a head of cabbage let me clean this off in this episode we count how many times Mikey washes his hands <laughs> be quite a few <laughs> all right so now I want to do is take half a head of cabbage Start make sure I get right there at the heart of it. Now, Aunt Lou's recipe says a whole head. Yeah, we tried doing a whole head. It just wouldn't fit it in was, our crop. It was think, too big. Yeah, I think our cabbage might be bigger than the one she Set used. That to the side. Now, if you want to, you could probably make some coleslaw with that. My mom's got a great recipe. Call her. She'll give it to you. Uh, she might not want everybody calling her. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> My mom be like, is this another telemarketer? I don't want any. <laughs> Get the core out of there, just like that. Ta -da. Now, you could throw this away or you could put a little bit of salt on it and it tastes good by itself. I don't want it. All I want to do 
is... I don't think I've ever eaten cabbage uh, before. Sunday afternoons, Mom would cook up a big dinner, and she would also make coleslaw with it. Homemade coleslaw. And simple recipe of cabbage and carrots with a lot of mayonnaise and a whole lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. And then she'd cut the hearts out of the cabbage, and then we'd all be standing around waiting for it, and with some salt, and we'd just sit there and eat the, the hearts while she was making the rest of dinner. You know, my mom used to cut the core out of a, cat, a whole head of cabbage and stuff a butter stick in it, and then boil it for a long time. That's kind of what we're doing here, without the grill, but... Uh, yeah. Alright, that's it. That's all I'm going to do with that. Now, I have pre-made to save time because I'm kind of slow when it comes to foil. I just took a couple pieces and put them together, seamed them together long ways. We slide this out the way. I'm going to toss my cabbage right there. We could have probably put a little bit more in, but I think it's good for now. For illustration purposes, that's all you get! <laughs> I'm going to take my taters. Uh, we're making a foil there. packet to yes. protect it from the briny juice uh -huh. of the corn. Let the flavor separate. Yeah, but then the other part that kind of comes out is because some of the butter is going to come out. Yeah. And it's going to go into the meat. Just mm -hmm. make it a little more tasty. Ah. And then I'm going to use salt and pepper. Here's some pepper. Lots of pepper. Because that's a lot of cabbage. And... Lots of salt, because cabbage will kind of soak up the salt, just like that. Of course, you can salt and pepper it more later if you wish. And then seal up my packet and cross my fingers. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> A stick of butter. Two half sticks of butter. You're going to need that. Over a hundred episodes, and I still forget to put stuff in the recipe. They were sitting there going, he's going to seal that up. What's he going to do with all that butter? Is he going to make toast? <laughs> I'm just going to slice up my butter into pats. My wife is, I, she just went. <gasps> I feel like we need a knife disclaimer on this episode. Yeah. Please do not. Please do not let Mikey use your knives in the kitchen. He's not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I think they can see that. butter in slices so that it will evenly melt over the top of your potatoes oh, and your cabbage. I hope our insurance company number watches oh, I know. <laughs> I can hear that phone call. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Goo are canceling your insurance because your husband's clumsy in the kitchen. It's going to happen. Alright. Now, I promise, this is where we want to seal up our packet. Hopefully. Paint it right there. Right there. Seal that like that. Pinch it up on the top again like that. And there you have an aluminum foil burrito. <laughs> and then just to make sure, because you can see right there, and you want to make sure that goes bottom side down. And where all the seams are gone. Let me grab a little bit more. This time, we'll go like this. Seal it up like that. And pray and it crimp, fits. And hope it fits. Because <laughs> if not, <sighs> ah, it fits. Ta -da! Good job. Right over the top of your meat. Put a lid on it. Oh yeah. And before I forget, because I'm so excited to eat what I've got going on back there, before you put your packet of veggies on top, what you want to do is make sure you've got plenty of water going on. I've got four cups here, and it's not going to take all that. It's going to depend on the size of your slow cooker as well as the size of your corned beef. You want to take your water, and I'm going to go to the side of it so I don't wash off all of those good spices on top. That's all I needed. You don't want to cover it all the way up over the fat, but just enough where it almost covers us up, uh, covers up the meat. So mine took about two cups of water. Again, it'll vary depending on how big your roast is, but that's going to be enough to make this super, super good. Now, take your packet and put it back on top. Just like that. She fits. Now you put a lid on it. <laughs> Set it for eight hours on low. 
And when you get it done in eight hours, you're gonna come out with, well, corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> Let me slide that right there so you can see it. So you can see the packet on top is hot. Now we made and all that heat yeah. from the bottom of the slow cooker has gone up and it's heated up that butter. It's softened up your cabbage, hopefully softened up the potatoes. I'm saying hopefully because I haven't opened up this packet yet. Well, it cooked for eight hours. I it's should probably get my cutting board back out. Uh, now, you don't want to do this if you just cook this after eight hours. We had this cooked up last night, but it was a little late to tape, so we warmed it up today. So it's just warm. It's not hot. But it's like, ta-da. Look at that corned beef down below. It's like little presents. <laughs> Careful, that looks My hot. gift to you. Yeah, the more I peel back the layers, it's the ho ho hotter it's getting. Uh, um, holy moly. <laughs> Foiled again. One more time. Flip that baby over. And I should be able to open this right up. Oh, you can smell that butter. And that cabbage smells so good. Now this is probably going to be uncomfortable. I'll just use the cutting board. Look at what I have created. Look at that. See that cabbage right there? You see that cabbage right there? Hmm? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Why don't you get a plate so you can kind of put it all together? Okay. <laughs> <coughs> oh my goodness. I'm 39 years old. And in 39 years, that is the best tasting cabbage I've ever had in my life. The butter is soaked down in it, of course, so it's got that buttery flavor. But then those baby reds are a little sweet. So they've cooked up and the sweetness from the baby reds soaked into the cabbage, which also means that that butter and that cabbage flavor has soaked into the baby reds. I'm gonna get a plate, y'all. I'll be right back. I'm back. All right. We oh, grab a fork. Big plate. I'm a big boy. <laughs> Next thing I want to check out though is this meat. See how tender it is? And it's tender. Might need to get a knife. Now this is where I've never cooked brisket or I've never really cooked a brisket before. I've never cooked corned beef. Most of the time I've seen corned beef sliced up, but Right. I've never sliced a corned beef. I guess we could try that now. As we make a bigger mess in our kitchen. I just want to try it. Let's see what happens. This could be an epic fail for you two. Okay. We'll, see. well let's clean that off before. Let's, let's, let's clean that off. Clean off my... There we go. Good. Now I'll take my corned beef. Should come out just. Oh, it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Look at that. Look at that. See how all the fat has it's really started to render down into the meat itself. And then oh, I have a big mess to clean up. Let's do some slicing here. I don't know if you're supposed to slice this way or the other way. Yeah, it has to be this way. Cut against the grain. Look at that. Oh, that looks good. And the pink flavor is because of the um, that's curing the browning. process. Yeah, that's the curing process. So it's going to stay red. You're like, oh, that's raw meat. No, it's not raw it's meat. It's kind of like it's the curing beef. of ham. It's, yeah. It's the same kind that's of thing. That's why it stays red. Yeah. So let me slide a little piece of that right there. Get myself a very soft tater. Watch, watch this. Right into the tater. You know what's done when it does that. Let me give me another one. And we'll get some cabbage to go along with it. Just a little bit, just to show you. And then when I shut the cameras off, I'll eat the rest of it. <laughs> I meant the rest of that. You got your taters that are all soft, your cabbage. Now let's cut in. Look, see how, look how easy it is to cut into that beef. Let's get ourselves a bite of that. Hmm. Corned beef is a very salty meat. Mm. So, the sweetness of that cabbage 
to go with it. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you you're you're like the meat is a, is 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 secondary to your love for that cabbage. I want to try something here. Oh, I'm going to try a little bit of the cabbage, a half a tater, and that meat and put it together. Are you having a party in your mouth? My head's going to explode. This is so good. Mm. The meat, like I said, is salty because it's been brined. All that salty flavor has soaked deep down into the meat. But when you put those little baby reds in there, that sweetness that's soaked into the cabbage now goes with the meat, and it totally complements itself. Y'all, y'all Irish people got it going on. Oh my goodness! And I just thought your beers were good, but my goodness, this food's delicious. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> Takes eight hours to do. About five, maybe ten minutes to put it all together. So in eight hours and ten minutes, you're gonna have one of the most delicious dinners ever. Not just on this site, so, like, so but in the world. So maybe, <laughs> maybe so it good. shouldn't be limited to just one day a year. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> you know, it's St. Patty's Day's coming up. I don't just normally wear hats like this. <laughs> well, kind of you do. Sometimes. <laughs> But I would cook this anytime and have friends over and they would absolutely enjoy it. That's one of the best meals we've made yet on the site. So, we hope that you've liked what you've seen here. If you would, give us a subscribe down below. Give us a like on this and I'm telling you, you got to try this. Also, give us a comment. What do y'all normally do on St. Patty's Day? And if you would, keep checking us out. Because if y'all keep watching, we'll keep cooking. And all will be well. Yeah. This has definitely shamrocked my work. Mm. One potato, I'm trying to potato. count, and you're... Stop it! One potato, two potato, three potato, four. I'm about to lose my head. <laughs>